the spectrum of the white light from the arc is continuous. This shield has holes in it to permit light to pass through. Inside it is the sodium burner we used before. I'm putting it in the path of the white light from the arc. The occasional flickering you see, extending over the entire spectral range, is due to smoke from the flame, throwing a shadow on the slit. As hot sodium vapor forms, it absorbs light in a narrow region of the yellow part of the spectrum. We may think of sodium atoms in the vapor as oscillating dipoles driven by white light. That means light waves of different frequencies. But sodium has a natural frequency in the yellow. So, there is a resonance in the yellow, and light is absorbed there. In sodium vapor, the resonance is very sharp and narrow. Now let's go on to the prism of sodium vapor. We'll produce it in this device. It's basically a steel tube. Glass windows have been sealed to each end with flanges. There already is some sodium metal in the tube. Through this access pipe, which has a valve in it, most of the air has been evacuated from the tube. At each side, a copper pipe is wound around the tube and soldered to it. A straight piece connects the coils along the top. Cold water is running through the copper pipes. A gas burner will heat the bottom from a line of flames. With the bottom hot, the top and sides cold, sodium vapor will be most dense near bottom center. It will be least dense along the top and at each end because the vapor will condense on the cold sections. Altogether, this density variation will form what is, in effect, a vapor prism oriented this way. It will refract red light down and green light up. I've put up a simple spectroscope for this prism. Our light source is a carbon arc. Light from the arc is focused on a slit. The slit is horizontal because it must be parallel to the refracting surfaces of the vapor prism which are oriented this way. The vapor prism is only the first part of a double spectroscope. The second section involves the glass direct view prism mounted as before. It disperses the light rays from the carbon arc in a horizontal plane, red going there, green and blue this way. The second slit is vertical. It's perpendicular to the first slit. Let's check what the camera sees if I keep the sodium tube cold and just turn the arc on. The sodium tube produces no up and down dispersion because it is cold. The glass prism disperses horizontally. Red at left, light green at right.
we see that the sodium prism bends the light down on the red side and up on the green side. Refraction is toward the normal on the red side because on this side the phase speed of light through the vapor is less than C. And refraction is away from the normal on the green side because it is more than C. Notice the qualitative resemblance between this spectrum of the two crossed prisms and the dispersion curve we derived on basis of our classical model. The reason why the spectrum does not reflect the curve continuously is also clear from our model. There is absorption at the resonance. In high dispersion, the yellow sodium light is found to be a doublet, two spectral lines separated by six angstroms as to wavelength. So there are really two resonances. We see two dispersion curves next to each other. Our experiment with the sodium vapor prism proves that above resonance, the light rays are bent away from the normal. In other words, the experiment proves that the phase velocity can indeed be larger than C at some frequencies. To conclude, we'd also like to tell you that the quantum mechanical theory of dispersion leads to the same result in almost every detail as does the classical explanation we have presented in this film.